has been deadly from that position for most of the second half. Well, number seven, Margol driving for the Spaniards, and he made the bucket. He's got 13 in the second half, three three-pointers and two two-pointers. So, I mean, he's done a pretty good job also. Eight-point lead now for Spain. Tillman fouled. With 138 left, eight points down. That's not a bad move by Tillman. If it goes in, he gets two plus one. This way, he does get two free shots, and the clock is not running, but you got to hit him. Concern on the face of the Canadian head coach, Jack Donahue, trying to marshal his forces now. Watch him. He gets pinched, drives, squeezes in between him, throws it up. Even though he's fouled, it just doesn't go in, so he'll go to the line shooting too. But they haven't got the play from the people that they needed. I don't think a lot of people was expecting Carl Tillman to come out today and put on the show, but it's a good thing he did because if he didn't, they'd have really been in trouble. Well, Spain would be up by 20 now if he hadn't have caught fire in the second half. You're exactly right, because if you look at just look at the score sheet for all the other players on Canada's team, Triano with two, Hatch with two, and Munger with two, and the rest of the second half points belong to Carl Tillman. So once again, here is the Canadian situation. Canada loses this game. Their record goes to one and three. We assume that China will go to one and three after playing the USA today. Uh, most people conceding that game to the Americans, and well, they should be. So Canada and China would have identical records of one and three, and Canada's hopes of getting into the playoffs would come down to tomorrow's game against China. And then the best they could ask for, Scott, is to finish fourth, which means when they go to the quarterfinals, they would play the first place team from the A pool, which looks like it's going to be Yugoslavia. Well, Carl Tillman has been red hot in the second half, but when you trail by eight with a minute and 38 to go, you can't miss those. No, these are free ones. That's why they call them free throws. All right, he's got one out of two, but they've got to press now. They've got to th all caution. They've got to have five guys inside the half-court line. Got to. And they do. Pasquale but They're going to press against a man-to-man. Man. Pressing a man-to-man. -man. I thought they'd try to double-team him, Scott. Sorry. Salzabal is fouled. Canada has to draw the foul now to try and get the ball back. Well, that's only their 16 foul, so that means that they'll have to take the ball out of bounds. They won't go to the free throw line shooting. 81-88. Seven point lead for the Spaniards over Canada. And how the complexion of this game has changed. It was a 13 point lead for Canada in the first half. 51-45 at the half. A game similar to the one that Canada played against the USA when they uh, shocked the Americans in the first half and wound up losing by six, 76-70. Canada pressing. That's good play by Yearwood. He came over and pressed him, but when you do that, you leave your man open. And the Spaniards found him, and inside he missed the stuff, which is surprising. But we're going to get two and one. It's number eight. Jimenez. Andres Jimenez, and he and Fernan uh, Martin have been deadly for Spain in the second half. They've really hurt Canada. Yeah, Jimenez has 14 points in the second half to go along with six, so he's got 20. We said before the game started, Scott, that they're a very balanced scoring machine. Jimenez has 20. We said Mar Martin has hurt him. He has got 13. He's got around 20. So they're all going to share in the load, whereas Canada has been a one-man show. One man show in the person of Carl Tillman in the second half. Eli Pasquale in the first half. Tillman from three point oh. territory again, well off the mark, and Spain gets it back. Look down floor. See them? Here's Martin. the big guy again. Martin underneath. Canada rebounds. Tillman to lead the attack. The final minute now. Eli Pasquale from three point territory. No. Canada gets it back. Tillman will try it again. It's good. So Canada closest to within six. 90-40 for the Spaniards. 83 po eight three points for Tillman in the second half. But again, they scored the three points at that end of the floor, and the ball was at this end before you could blink your eyes, and when you look down there, there were three Spaniards to two Canadians. When you're trailing, you've got to force them. You've got to be everywhere at once, and you can't be, and that's Spain's finding the open man. Jack Donahue's worst fear in this game has been realized. He did not want Spain to take control of the game and dictate the pace, but that's what happened. Good foul by Pasquale takes the layup away, but what they will do now, the option is not to shoot the free throws. Well, they wouldn't get them anyway, because this is just their, yeah, they would, the 18th, person, 18th foul, they had the option, they decided to take the ball. 29 seconds, they don't need any more points. Every time you foul them, they'll take it out, they get a fresh 30 seconds on the clock. Six point lead for the Spaniards, 27 seconds to go in the ball game. That's Turcotte in for Canada now.
Carl Tillman draws the or takes the foul again. Yeah. They're going to call that a deliberate foul. That's Tillman's third. Deliberate foul. They'll give me, give me shots and the ball. Yeah, this game's over. That it is. Montero with the line for Spain. Underlining the fact that uh, Spain cannot be caught now with 25 seconds to go. 92-84. So they not only get the two shots on that deliberate foul like that, but now they get the ball out of bounds. So they keep... So we're going to follow them again. Watch. They got it now. They're just going to throw that ball around, pass it around, keep control of it. Spain just running the clock down now. 15 seconds remaining. Good good job of ball control also. Of course, when you, they got them running, they got you running around. They know what they're doing. Dwight Walton in the game for Canada in the dying moments, and he draws the foul. All of this, of course, in a vain attempt uh, for Canada because uh, with only seven seconds to go, the lead is insurmountable. Well, they said they had to stop the fast break. They did a fair job of that in the first half, not in the second. They did not hit the defensive boards. Martin and those controlled them. And then the big thing was they did not allow Canada to penetrate inside and get the easy close-in shots. Not at all. They really closed off the inside on them in the second half, and Eli Pasquale was uh, was really watched closely by the Spaniards. I don't think they let him over the uh, the half court line for much of the second half. They were on him all the time. As soon as he came up the floor, they had Souza ball waiting on him at half court, and he pressured him from there on. And as a result, Pasquale, with 19 points in the first half, got none in the second. Which is exactly what happened against the USA the other day when he was red hot in the first half and cooled in the second half. Six seconds left. And Spain with an insurmountable 10-point lead. Pasquale tried it from three points. And that ends the game. So Canada falls 94-84 to 84 to Spain. And uh, their record is now 1-3. They'll have to beat the Chinese tomorrow to get into the playoffs. Let's check with Don Whitman and get the story on the marathon. <laughs>